today is to provide a bit of a background for those that may be unfamiliar with the work that's been transpiring associated with the development of the Common Career Technical Core Initiative. Mm -hmm. So a little bit more of the process that has been occurring. Here we are in that process. Identify progress, and then provide an opportunity to answer uh, questions uh, at the end of the webinar. First, where did this all begin? And as a part of this process, many of you were engaged in the development of the React Transform Lead Vision for Career Technical Education. That was published roughly two years ago. Then for where CTE and enterprise needed to go for the future. As of that vision, there were five core principles that were identified, in addition to several action steps to each of those principles. Several action steps refer to the creation or the development of something known as the common technical core. And there were is behind that, and, and a part of it was supporting um, consistency in the delivery of CTE into in today's global economy and for a global um, workforce. To increase the high quality expectations of CTE, regardless of where people experience it or the delivery systems that are provided, CTE is a unique and rich diversity in the degree of, of programs and in experiences. And as part of this opportunity of creating the common technical core is a way for us to find and connect those expectations so that they're ensured uh, to be quality across the country. Well, an element of that notion of this common technical core was to assist in embracing and aligning with other college and career efforts, including the Common Core State Standards in English Language Arts, and another career readiness efforts uh, that are around the country. So then, um, the state directors, and specifically the board of directors, uh, had an opportunity for us to coordinate a process. The process basically um, I'm going to explain kind of unravel and un um, and this here. I'll let you know as of today, um, there are 42 states, the District of Columbia, and one story um, that have declared support to participate in the development of the Career Technical Core. So what that means is that there's the idea or belief in the notion of of something that helps connect and align the expectations of CTE among the states, and the states would like to be a part of creating that part that process. The fact that we have undertaken uh, as a part of experience um, is after that of the development of the Common Core State Standards, and we took some of the lenses that provided some opportunities for engagement on the broad engagement of the public is part of providing feedback, a number of other key critical points in the development process that we have infused into our system. And then we have partnered with Marzano Research Laboratory. Robert Marzano um, had rich experience in, in research and educational research and practice and in its development. And the people from Marzano Research Laboratory have been integral in helping facilitate and connect and guide the process from a third party management perspective. Common Career Technical Core and one of the principles from vision was the, the connection of the National Career Clusters Framework. And that is the framework for providing and connecting and aligning the work. Also, as a part of this process, we are building from the 10 years of creations and development of the mission skill statements that have occurred and the connection to the work that 
and it's gone through industry validation over the years. Engage the general public as a part of that process. So we go in ultimate use of these common career technical core standards, and I think it's important to understand that what they are as well as what they're not. And ultimately, we'll focus on what they are and kind of address some of those pieces um, along the way. Standards for common career technical core are intended to be written uh, to the educational ex expectations across an entire program of study. Uh, the, the, the notion is, is that the, the program of study is, is a series of courses uh, that connect to this particular process. Programs of study vary significantly from state to state and includes post secondary education and work experience. And so these broad program level programs of these standards are intended to kind of take into consideration the, the opportunity for experiencing educational um, learning, teaching at the post secondary and work experience. Level. standards are also intended to provide the core expectations across the different delivery systems and approaches, and, and again, create that connection, uh, that opportunity for us uh, to connect from state to state. So the focus on foundational and higher order concepts. Ultimately, the core of what students should know and be able to do in the industry sector or the pathway associated with that particular work. The link um, to existing state CT standards and curriculum frameworks and search certifications and/or other program efforts. So ultimately, the, career, um, the career technical core is not intended to frame courses. The, the standards are not intended to provide day-to-day -day course instructional objectives, but rather provide the broad, overarching expectations of what students should know and be able to do at the end of a program of study. To help bind and connect from state to state and program to program. Gradually depicting this notion is this sort of broad program level um, concept that helps then align and connect to standards and industry standards, and depending upon the depth and depth of the instructional delivery process that occur in the state. So considerations were that we wanted to focus this process, and this was one of the lessons we learned from the Common Core State Standards, uh, on common among states versus national or federal kind of approach. It was something critical that states were involved in this process. Um, we should not from a blank sheet of paper, but with the rich um, value, knowledge and skill statements as the baseline. And we wanted to ensure that we engaged the broader education partners as a part of that process. And thus created the Career Readiness Partner Council that is uh, made up of a number of uh, organizations, education groups, business and industry, and, and try to identify a definition for career readiness and also help support uh, the notion of understanding the common career technical core. So that's the process. Some of you have seen this before, but basically we started the process in the spring of 2011 with the review of the knowledge and skill statements. We're through the process now of the common career technical core development, and ultimately with the goal of having that completed in the, in the summer or in the, in the middle of the summer. And then um, the process for adoption by states and how to go about doing that will, would be something that would be ongoing. So that was the knowledge and skill revision process. And those that aren't familiar with that process, um, last spring we began the process. We engaged subject matter experts from around the country with an online review and rating of the existing knowledge and skill statements. We had benchmark standards from a variety of industries and perspectives, and that included state curriculum standards, um, industry certifications, and other resources. And brought together to a writing team that helped synthesize that input, uh, with those benchmark standards, and then proposed revisions. Those proposed revisions were completely
completed in January and put up online again for another round of industry validation. Over through that process, we've had over 1,700 review and responses from around the country. Um, and from each perspective, there's about 45% of that has been business and industry. 15% from the state curriculum experts and 16% from post-secondary. The advantages represent uh, secondary school teachers and others, federal agencies, that kind of thing. All information then served as the baseline for the beginning of the work of the Common Career Technical Corps in the working groups. And these groups uh, were created as a part of this the exploration of the states, those 42 states. District of Columbia and Territory provided an opportunity for uh, one state representative per work group. A state could have up to 16 working group members participate in this particular process. We found a way that was both cost effective, time effective, and did not provide barriers to participants because of travel restrictions or budget restrictions and those kinds of issues. And so we're able to do uh, is utilize the wonders of technology to convene through web meetings and virtual based kinds of situations for the opportunity for the working groups. The of these working groups has been to identify some uh, process has been to identify the consensus among the participants on the working groups uh, to create a set of, of standards that could help frame this broader program study. The men working group vary from state to state. They business and entry representatives, state leaders, and curriculum specialists. We've got post secondary instructors, we've got master teachers, and the commission thereof. Right. Um, we have over 320 working group members that, have, that are on the particular, on all of the 16 working groups. And that number, I put the plus there because it doesn't necessarily reflect the total number of people sort of engaged in the process. The state has approached this differently. Some states have identified a working group member that's their expert. Others have identified someone that is a facilitator of a process and basically serves as a liaison to an advisory board or an industry council. Um, and other states have done different kinds of approaches. But ultimately, the synthesis of that process and the engagement and representation has been wide and rich. The process now. Um, I've validated the knowledge and skills statements, and that process was completed. Um, and we had our first set of working group meetings, and primarily it was a training sort of session for the working group members, provide an opportunity then for the members of the working group to provide an initial round of feedback. We provide statements. To the working group members, they were able to, through their series of processes determined within their state, by feedback over the weeks that was synthesized and brought to working groups that actually met this entire week. And I, I say this entire week, but basically we had 16 working group meetings from say, Monday morning through yesterday afternoon. And the work groups uh, came to review that feedback make adjustments and adaptations to uh, the skill statements that were a part of that. And that that is being synthesized and prepared for a public comment period. And the comment period is set to begin Monday, uh, run through May 11th. And the note and the idea is to ultimately allow for as many people as possible to provide additional feedback and input on what these are the right, uh, we have a content and the right level of processing associated with these particular standards and the frame the broader concept of the expectations from across the program of study. One public comment period is done, the data will be synthesized um, and provide um, an opportunity for the final working group meetings. Again, 16 cluster work working groups will on May 23rd and 24th to finalize the standards. And then we're to release the, the standards for the Common Career Technical Corps on June 19th at the National Career Clusters Institute in Washington, D.C. at the Oshora.
sort of little schematic. Basically, we're about halfway through the process of the work of the work groups. Uh, in draft two of that of this proposed standards of the common career technical core, or specifically the technical pieces, will be available for public comment uh, beginning on Monday. Just a little bit about um, the, some of the, the basic components of the Common Career Technical Core. There's, there's really two pieces. And what I've up to this point is a lot of the process that was developed around in the this on the technical core side of it. But there's a piece of this that's also connected to uh, you know this idea of standards for career ready practice. The idea of the standards for career ready practice actually. Um, came from uh, for familiar with the with the medical practices in the Colorado State standards. The you know, of there are certain um, standards as well as sort of habits or habits of mind kind of standards or approaches that really um, are that you don't just complete and finish, and you can forever be done. Uh, ultimately, there's an opportunity. Uh, these standards for career practice to continually be embedded across the curriculum instruction experience and by provide a variety of contexts to again practice that particular skill set. That component. And then the component is a common technical core piece. A little bit more um, specific look at some of the, the career ready practices that are um, the standards for career ready practice. Three examples of the emerging 12 practices that again will be a part of that public comment period coming up next next week. Location and career path aligned to personal goals. So it's a kind of approach. And what we have is a um, demand that kind of provides different appropriate experiences that could occur or demonstrations that could occur in the context of practicing this mission of education and your career path that's connected to your personal goals. And the practice is to communicate clearly and effectively and with reason. And act as a responsible and contributing citizen and employee. So it's focused on citizenship kind of piece as well as the potential connection of an employee. So we are not familiar with the notion of these practices. This is um, from the Common Core State Standards uh, mathematics. And these, these, you know, the math practices are, are, are continuing to focus as this, this, this tool, this resource that allows for connecting um, the process of learning and practicing these particular um, skill sets. The other part then of the Common Career Technical Core is that of the the technical part, the, the the actual kind of broad program of study expectation. And this is work that has been and continues to um, go through the processes um, to a lot provide an opportunity for connecting to the state. So there's this, this opportunity um, to connect the pieces of the puzzle and, and take that strong foundation of common knowledge and career readiness in mathematics and English language arts, connect that to the common technical core piece, and then having this broad opportunity for these career practices to support overall educational experiences and career readiness preparation of students. Sometimes there's a question about whether or not this is leading to um, this is maybe kind of national tests or national assessment or is it something that's going to do um, that that's going to provide that? The answer is no, not right away, but the sort of longer answer is that there's some opportunities I think for us to think about some some that we can buy and support and tools for a, a, a and for students. The first of that is to really sort of step back and take a look and learn from and ultimately connect to the work of the consortiums 
that are implementing the Common Core State Standards assessments in math and English language arts. A significant amount of resources and investment being made in not only processes, but only systems of delivery of those particular assessments. And so decisions are made with regard to any kind of assessment pieces in the jury associated with the Common Career Technical Core. It makes complete and total sense for us to ensure that it's aligned and support and taps into the systems delivery that are emerging and being developed as part of those particular consortiums. And that it does is um, there are, as many of you know, so many wonderful, rich certifications and credentials and technical assessments that have been developed, as well as state or curriculum assessments that exist. And having an opportunity for us to at least at a broad program level have an element from state to state, it provides an opportunity for those kinds of experiences, resources that are in depth, as well as potentially breadth. Um, with them, but then ultimately map or align, if you will, um, to this particular process. So I remind you again um, the public comment period on the the um, of the Common Career Technical Core expectations available on Monday, April 30th through May 11th. Access that on our website at careertech.org, and there will be a page and an opportunity to get each and every one of the 16 career classes and the subsequent work as transpired by the working groups. This is a quote that was used by the Marzano uh, group in, in sort of the working group sessions here the past um, week, uh, but ultimately focusing on collective intelligence. Uh, that, that collectively we can, can add as well as create synergy. And so that's, in the spirit of this process, all along is to, to create this connection of collective intelligence that helps to ensure a, con a connection among the states uh, in a synergy that helps to increase the, the connection. I will stop. We'll start to kind of open it up for some questions and some opportunities for questions that we may not have addressed. The primary idea of this was to provide a brief background for everyone about the common technical core, as well as just dig into where we are in the particular process, um, answer any questions that may or may not exist. Thank you, Dean. We do have a few questions. Some of them are quite easy. There may be one that's a little more complex, but let's go ahead with our uh, set of questions. And um, the first question that someone had is, do you know the session or the time um, for the meet at the Career Clusters Institute, the, the big uh, sin that you're going to roll things out? You have it scheduled for a general okay. session on, on Tuesday, June 19th. Um, it'll be the first session of that morning, and that's when we will roll out um, the work experiences associated with um, the working groups. Okay, thank you. I think this question may have already answered itself, but it says, will the Common Career Technical Core be ready and reviewed at the Washington Conference in June? And, and the assumption would be yes. I, okay. Yes. Yeah. There will be um, at least some, um, some resources that will be in print at the conference. But a, a big part of what we tend to do as is, is, is a part of the rollout is to provide most of the resources and tools for access um, online virtual environments. So um, the guys, knowledge, and skill statements that are uh, and uh, the work that is associated with that. But, massive database that we'll be able to utilize online, and these refund standards that are coming from the group process, uh, visualize that there also will be an online and available in, in a format that's usable and mobile and, uh, and an opportunity for, for, for states to, to age and use them. Uh, we will have um, something that, that um, people have in their hands at the, at the meeting as well. 
Thank you, Dean. Uh, here's another question. Will a summary of the work from the April webinars, the ones that were just conducted, be on the website soon? We have anxious folks. Yes, uh, Monday is when um, all of the work that has been transpiring this week will be available um, online so that people, and ultimately anyone, working members and teachers and business and industry, parents, students, anyone that would want to come and provide some feedback and review knowledge that are these emerging and career technical core standards. Um, they will online at careerdeck.org uh, where and then there's a little button on there that'll show up on Monday. Um, I'll take you to the page where all of the links are to go to those particular kind of data tools. It's kind of like a survey monkey uh, where the stand pop up and then it'll ask you a couple of questions. Is it by content? If not, how do you change it? Is it by level of processing? Um, if how would you change it? And then move on to the next next statement. And so that will all be available as a part of, of the experience on it. Hey, um, ready for another question, Dean? Sure. Okay. Uh, this one, uh, the uh, attendee is asking, to what extent are these standards expected to be incorporated into CTE state plans slash Perkins? That's a great question. I don't know as if, if um, you know, the, the sort of vision of creating this was to somehow uh, infuse or require or mandate into the state plans, but rather um, an opportunity for states to work completely together uh, to ensure that we are all kind of on expectations from a broad probe study kind of perspective. And ultimately, it was, I, it's, this sort of comes to mind from, a, from an old, old boss that used to think or describe that, you know, people sort of change or just change in two ways. One, by the light of the fire, sort of the vision, two, by the heat of the fire. I think in this particular case, what we're with the, uh, the, the directors as well as those, um, again, this element of the vision is that it's, it's about sort of the light of the fire. That this is helping us move the CTE enterprise forward and provide a connection across states that helps provide this um, improvement kind of approach um, to, to the future. Okay, thank you, Dean. Also, uh, we do have a few uh, people that are still wanting to ask questions. Please use the chat feature. That's the vehicle I'm using to uh, field the questions and forward them on to Dean. So I'd appreciate that if you could all use the chat feature. And uh, let me move on to the next question. The Common Career Technical Core at some point specifically be aligned to assessment blueprints from various technical assessments. And if so, what might that alignment look like? It's, it's a great question. Um, oh yes, I, there's there's a unique opportunity for an alignment to occur, and so whether or not that alignment is um, from the assessment blueprints that exist um, up to the, the um, levels. Expect that are a part of this, or what they're in, what this is intended to do, or it's some kind of blueprint that's created from this program work. work. Um, we sort of what we're attempting to do is to provide a common frame that, that states agree upon, and provide opportunities and thinking through how can we connect and support the connection to this particular frame. Instead, there's assessment blueprints where there's certifications in place and, and all of these sort of national um, um, kind of occupational certifications or um, certificates that exist. Uh, this common frame for us to connect those pieces that exist, as well as in places where we do not have these kind of national um, certifications, for us to flesh out and, and develop something that helps support the, of the state. You know, coming to think, some of the come to mind are in government and public administration. Um, 
where a number of different kinds of certifications that exist, but with that sort of a nuanced career cluster, at least in the CTE world, where in some cases it's really doing things, in other cases some states don't address some educational experiences in that area. So, so there's a significant amount of flexibility, but, but the kind of vision ultimately is to create this, this set of something that we can connect to, um, that agree upon, or at least the, the states that adopt the notion of agreeing to that these would be the baseline, the, the minimum expectations of what students should know and be able to do over a program of study, and building from there. Um, one of the key things that came up several times during the working groups is this, this, this sort of notion that our state does much more than this, or our state needs to have something that helps address this particular industry sector. And it's an, it's an important notion because exactly what sort of the element of this, this frame does is it provides at least a baseline connection for the states to connect, but it also for the flexibility and, in fact, encourages the unique flexibility of when states to really focus in on economic development and workforce priorities, ensuring that the educational experiences, certifications, um, alignments, uh, transitions, articulation plans, dual credit work is, is implemented and supported in, in sort of even further um, into the uh, as a part of this, this experience. Uh, let's segue into a little bit of the business in it and industry sector. And one of our uh, persons had a question about this, uh, and they said, "Can you ask, or, or can you share a sense of the business and industry members participating? For example, CEOs, HR types, and others like that." Yeah, it's, um, yeah. This is, again, it, it's really sort of it's over the board. I mean, we, we don't have a significant number of CEOs that spend time providing and reviewing educational standard statements. Most people, though, that, that did do it have some connection to um, the training or working aspect of what needs to um, happen in their particular industry. We had several um, industry associations that um, were able to connect to their members and ensure that the members um, had representatives, whether they be from HR offices uh, or um, actual frontline people that are engaged in those particular pieces. And it's, it's a bit of process. It's sort of a balance of, okay, well, what is it that people need to be able to do and how do we say in a way that's sort of education ease that helps in frame at least the instructional expectations associated with it. The right verb and that kind of thing. So there's there's balance between, and so oftentimes the people that participated from the business and industry perspective have that, that element of balance um, and contribute in that that way. So it's this is really it's, it's your crossword: businesses, large organizations, um, or part of that particular process. Thank you, Dean. Uh, we'll just get right along. Our next uh, question is. Will the new crosswalks be released at the Career Clusters Institute as well as the updated Knowledge and Skills Common Career Technical Core? Think about the new crosswalks. Uh, and I'm, I'm thinking this is referring to the SIP code, SOC code, ONIC uh, code crosswalks that, that exist. This project has been going on. Uh, over the past year working with and through the National Research Center, uh, some resources that helped to fund this particular project. And the answer is, is yes, some crosswalks will be available at the Institute. There are a few of the crosswalks, and, and those that are not familiar, there's, there's about seven or eight different crosswalks that exist on our website that crosswalk the different coding structures to the career clusters framework. And there's uh, the focus primarily on the SIP crosswalk was the number one piece, and then ultimately we're looking to add the connection to the SOC codes um, as the ONET career codes as a part of the crosswalk. And so there is a session during the Institute um, where Bruce Sternagel and, and Pradeep 
will remain um, in kind of an update of progress, and as well as unveiling that that work to date. So yes, um, that that will occur. Second question is related to the knowledge and skill statements. Um, that again, yes, there will be a session on that process, kind of reviewing what happened, what the results were, as well kind of calling the rich treasure trove of resources that have the sample performance indicators and the sample indicators and that kind of thing. And that will be used to access that through the online database query search kind of opportunity um, that will be a part of that, that experience. Dean, we have several more questions, so we'll just continue to move forward. Uh, the next question asks, does the commitment of states to the Common Career Technical Core mean that the, the core actually replaces existing state technical skill standards? And my short answer to that is no. Um, what it does is that they're committing to um, a framework that helps connect and align across the states. And so that have a specific detailed curriculum framework and their technical standards that are associated with that framework really drive the curriculum that focus on what should be taught on a day-to-day -day basis in the classroom. Um, rich work and um, is still extremely valuable. What, what is an opportunity for states then is to net that rich experience and work, work to broad connection of what is that the other eight degree that would be at least the minimum expectations of what students should know and be able to do. And so, so it's to that, is this driving curriculum or not? What it's doing is framing the program of study and then um, the lessons in the states and from the from curriculum groups and other kinds of resources and depending on the depth of delivery of that instructional opportunity helps connect um, to other program level. Okay. Um, the next question is, does the administration's blueprint for transforming career and tech education include these standards? Uh, and, and then we'll add on to it, does the administration support these standards? It's a great question. Um, we, we, the short answer is no, it's not in the blueprint. Um, and one of the things that we've tried to do through this process, and it kind of gets to um, the fair notion about whether or not these are common standards among states, because states ultimately are in charge of their educational expectations, and so whereas these are federal. And so one of the balance pieces that we've ensured and want to continue to ensure is that this is really of the states, by the states, and for the states, uh, as opposed to it being some kind of federal mandated mixed in with legislation kind of approach. Uh, that tends to go with the winds of And so what we're attempting to do is similar to the leadership that was provided from the state directors when they, when with the adoption and then ultimately of taking over the career clusters framework and the, the work of taking over the knowledge skill statements and providing that resources was really from the states, by the states, and for the states. And, and that's really where we want to go and continue to go, I think, with, with this particular work. Um, realize the federal legislation is one ways to help supplement and support the implementation and you know, what the states are determined are the best direction for, for Asian policy. Thank you, Dean. The, you are probably already doing this, but one of our uh, attendees, um, just, um, a suggestion, said that it would be helpful if you could send the state directors an email on Monday announcing that the public comment period was open, asking input and giving the web link. And then what the directors can then do is they can send that, that, that out to their state stakeholders. So that's another way to spread the word about it, Dean. So. It's an excellent point, and, and it was indeed a part of our strategy on on Monday um, to that very thing. And so many of you may or may in fact be part of several different lists that we have. So if you get multiple um, multiple requests or notifications about that, please 
know that what we're attempting to do is ensure that you have the resources to forward on to others to ensure that they're engaged, um, inviting feedback as well as a part of this particular process. I should have also mentioned that um, so we see also is uh, milestones moving up here that there would also be communication being sent to all um, others of the state directors as well as those that sign up for uh, there's a, a little plan on, on the career tech org site if you want to find, sign up for updates about the current technical core work um, we'll be seeing those more um, updates and not visualizing some long detailed description of everything, but really kind of providing updates on the milestones and where we are in the, in the particular process so that the members and, and others that are interested are engaged and understand what's happened. Okay, thank you. I did have a question from a particular state, but I think to give it due diligence, Dean, I'm going to save that for you to answer at a later time so you can do a little bit more research first. Um, and I'm going to move on to the next question. And this one is, were national leaders from the career technical state organizations, the CTSOs, involved in the process in order to infuse the standards into the competitions and such in the CTSOs? Um, I'm in, from the, in the working groups, or I'm sure ultimately here where I, I know that we've interfaced um, with elements of of the student organizations and some of the expectations that they have. All along, um, we continued to see the student organizations as a tremendous resource and tool, especially in the student competitions, of, of practicing, implementing, and demonstrating in a real kind of context of the expectations for um, students should know and be able to do. And so part of um, the initial sort of review and revision of the knowledge and skills statements went with a number of the resources that exist from the student organizations as well as the curriculum organizations that, that support uh, those particular areas, um, influence and frame and think through the engine of that process. Um, but the working groups, there's several members of the working groups that are in ways um, your state connection to or the state leader associated with the different student organizations and brought to, to the table so that kind of um, experience or, or um, perspective um, as, as part of that conversation. But, but ultimately, the results of this, as far as the results of the, the end program level expectations, I think it would be a terrific opportunity for student organizations to, um, to have move forward and ensure that the alignment of these broad program of expectations are indeed connected to the work uh, that they're doing as well as a part of an integral nature of what it is that, that you should know and be able to do in the instructional process. Thank you, Dean. I do not see any more questions at the moment. We'll give folks just a, um, to uh, submit any more questions. Uh, just uh, hearkening back to my old ag teaching days, do you have anything, Dean, to say for the good of the order? Well, just I, I really appreciate everybody having the opportunity to for, um, give up a little bit of time on Friday afternoon. And I um, look forward to your continued support. I know the experiences this past week with the working groups um, is uh, tremendous from my perspective in seeing the passion and commitment to find um, and move forward this of DE, quality CTE, move forward to continue that work. And please promote where you can the comment period, um, April 3rd through May 11th, because um, we have continued input and engagement with as many people and perspectives as possible on the process. Excellent. And um, we do have one final question that came in, and it's, it asks, Will information on Monday include the edits from the April webinar work? Yes. Excellent, excellent. Okay, Dean, I, I think that we're ready to wrap it up. Um, folks can also continue to enter questions. Uh, if you look at the next slide, there's Dean's email address. If you have particular questions, be pleased to answer those. And again, I want to thank everyone for joining us today.
there will be a host event survey that will pop up uh, as soon as you close your screen. Uh, please, uh, the answers to the survey, they're very important to our staff to help us do better programming for you. And I also want to extend our appreciation to Cisco and to Chris for your great support of the use of our technology. And like I said earlier, I'll post the recording of the webinar. And uh, we've had several people ask for the PowerPoint of the webinar, and I'll put those on the website within the next day or so. And with that, I want to wish everyone a great afternoon.